Hello everybody, Dr. Yu here. Lots of you have commented on my last peer review video in response to John Campbell's videos on aspiration. And I don't have time to reply to every single comment, so here's a video responding to two of the most common questions. Did I make a mistake with the title of my video? And why I appear to be focusing my peer review videos only on John Campbell. So first, did I make a mistake with the title Five Reasons Not to Aspirate? Wouldn't it be more accurate for my video to be called Five Reasons That Aspiration Isn't Needed? Could I have possibly even been misleading with the title of my video? So after reading comments such as this one, and you can pause the video here if you'd like to check it out, I realized that this is one of those times where the logic we use in medicine is actually quite different from how we think through things in everyday life. The title of my video, as it currently is, it's still valid. The reason is because in medicine, we just simply don't do unneeded procedures. For example, if a surgery was unnecessary, if you didn't need the surgery to treat your medical condition, would you do it? Would any surgeon do it? The answer would be no. In medicine, the fact that a surgery or any procedure is unnecessary is reason enough not to do them. Every procedure or every extra step in a procedure carries with it two inherent risks. Risk one is healthcare provider error, and risk two is possible harm to the patient. I had already discussed in the video how, with aspiration, most healthcare providers make the mistake of not aspirating for the required five to 10 seconds in order to give time for blood to come out, making the aspiration pointless. I had also already discussed the possible harms to the patient, extra pain, and the risk of further tissue damage done by the needle, especially if the arm is moved during aspiration. Furthermore, there is no conclusive proof that aspiration prevents the very rare but real side effects of COVID vaccines. The case for aspiration is only based on speculation, fueled by YouTube videos and flawed studies. So why take these extra risks when there is no proven benefit? Unlike what this commentator is saying, that, quote, if you can prove it's not safe to aspirate based on evidence, then I would agree the additional step should be eliminated. We actually don't need to prove that a surgery or an extra step in a procedure like aspiration is unsafe in order to not do the surgery or the extra step. By showing you five reasons why aspiration, an extra step in the vaccination procedure, is unnecessary, that counts as sufficient reason not to aspirate in the world of medicine. This is why I stand by my title, Five Reasons Not to Aspirate. I do realize that this logic is different from what we use in daily life. In life, when we say, this isn't needed, it doesn't necessarily mean you should not do it. So this is good feedback for me. After all, YouTube is different from the practice of medicine. In the future, I'll be careful to avoid making assumptions and word things more clearly. The second main question is around John Campbell himself, and some of you may be interpreting my videos more personally than I had intended them to be. I've made two videos about John Campbell's misinterpretation of the science so far, and some of you have felt that I was specifically targeting him, or even attacking him. So let me just say, I'm not. I respect John, and I respect his excellent method of teaching. He was simply the first influencer I encountered on YouTube, who had such a large following and who was sharing misinformation, unintentional, I'm sure, which was obvious to me as a physician, but may not be obvious to everyone. And with the limited time that I had, I tried to make videos that would have the greatest impact. I am definitely not saying that all of John's videos are bad, and I'm not saying that he's actively promoting misinformation. I'm not making any judgments about John's intentions or his character. My videos attempt to point out that often, unintentionally or not, Misinformation can be buried, hidden, amongst credible science. My goal is to simply alert you viewers. This is one of the hardest types of misinformation to spot, especially when it comes from a seemingly credible source. Many of John Campbell's videos are great. They provide good information. But there are some that unfortunately do contain misinterpretations of the science. And I'm not the only person who has been trying to alert the public about this. To separate the misinformation from the accurate scientific information, requires medical or scientific training. With my medical background, I felt that it was my duty as a health advocate to point this out, especially during a global pandemic. Videos containing misinterpretations of the science can potentially result in audiences coming away with misinformed conclusions about ivermectin, about Paxlovid, and about aspiration, which during a global pandemic can be quite consequential. 
Some of you have asked if I reached out to John Campbell. And yes, I have, multiple times and in multiple different ways. Unfortunately, I have yet to hear back. It would be great to have a discussion with him about these topics. In the meantime, John and I are both men of science, and in science, it's normal to have peer reviewers critique each other's work. And John is always free and welcome to critique my videos in the same way I am critiquing his. Some of you have also criticized me that I seem to be cherry picking bits and pieces of John's argument. Well, I actually haven't, but just to prove to you that I haven't been cherry picking, I do plan to make a third video responding to John's take on natural versus vaccine immunity. And I'll actually walk you through his video line by line to clearly show you which parts I agree with and which parts I don't based on the science. When I have it done, I'll link to it here. I also hope to make videos responding to other sources of misinformation, especially the type that we talked about, the misinformation that's buried in seemingly credible science. So if you're aware of any scientific sounding videos that you deem suspect and which you'd like to see me respond to, please pop it in the comments below. That's it for today. Stay safe, everybody. Take care.